Good morning, good afternoon, folks. The first Canucks game of the regular season goes tonight, October 13th against the Edmonton Oilers at 7 p.m. at Rogers Place. And right after that game, we'll have a post-game show here just seconds after the final horn. Just search Parker's Bucks on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel to find it there. But let's get into the lines. And the first thing you're going to notice here is the top line has Elias Pettersson between JT Miller and Alex Chieson. Not Brock Besser. Uh, here's the interesting thing. Brock Besser has been injured. He was retroactively placed on IR back on back to September 29th. So he's eligible to play and come off of IR. But unfortunately, he's still somewhat hurt. Now, he was out before morning skate skating on his own. He is now skating in the morning skate with Nick Patan. That means that, in theory, the Canucks could bring him into the lineup if Morning skate goes really well. Maybe they'll have him out for a warm up. It'll warm up. It'll be a last minute decision. However, if they were to do that, they'd have to send someone down to the AHL just because you can only have a certain number of players on your roster. Currently, Brock Besser isn't on the roster. He's on IR. So what they could do is they could send someone like Jack Rathbone down technically to the AHL. They could say, OK, we've designated him to the AHL freeing up that roster spot for Brock Besser. Rathbone doesn't have to go through waivers and looking at the lines, it doesn't look like he'll play tonight anyways. So Brock Besser is the main one to watch, but let's take a look through these lines. Like I said, Shason seems to be a placeholder for Brock Besser. Uh, the Canucks uh, staff liked what they saw from Shason uh, in the training camp preseason, especially sort of as a power play option. So look for him to slot in on the power play, especially if Brock Besser is out tonight. Not an ideal line for your first uh, first night of the season. You'd love to have that dynamic miller Patterson besser line, especially going up against uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl, who are going to be playing as a unit tonight. So that's going to be a, a powerhouse line for the Canucks to deal with. You'd like them to have a powerhouse line of their own, but uh, they're going to have to go with Shason instead of Besser there, most likely. Second line, Bo Horvat between Tanner Pearson and Connor Garland. Now, Lots of people would like to see Niels Hoaglander on this line, something like Hoaglander, Horvat, Garland. The issue there uh, is, uh, one, Hoaglander's playing on the right side. Two, Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat have been a really tight-knit unit, um, especially you know going back to last year. So you could have Horvat, Pearson, and Hoaglander on that second line and sort of keep going with what you did last, uh, last year and then move Garland down to the third line. However, I don't think they want Garland on the third line. Another thing they could have done, put Garland with Miller and Pedersen. But what I think they're trying to do is take out Besser to slot in Jason to not mess with the other lines that much, right? Keep Horvat, Pearson, and Garland as a unit to start the season, see how they do. You can change things up later. That leaves the third line with uh, Jason Dickinson in the middle, exactly where we expected him to be, a third line center. He's going to have Highmore on his left side and Hoaglander on his right. So with lots of the depth issues the Canucks are having, like with Brock Besser out of the lineup, with Tyler Mott, Brandon Sutter out of the lineup, you have to have a guy like Highmore moving up to that third uh, third group. And what you'll notice what that does is that brings Vasily Podkolzin down to the fourth line. And this is kind of what we expected after training camp. Podkolzin didn't have the best training camp. Uh, he didn't have the best preseason uh, and he didn't, you know, there were some people, Clay included, hoping that he would go in, slot in as a second line player right off the bat this year, maybe with, you know, Horvat and Pearson or with Garland and Horvat or something like that. However, uh, he's going to just get a fourth line role, play 10 minutes a night to start, and just try to get those legs ready for NHL action. And hopefully he can slot in and move up the lineup further on this year. He's going to be with Dowling on the left-hand side. Dowling was pretty good in preseason, uh, impressed enough to earn an opening night roster spot. And Juho Lamico, who got picked up in the trade for Ole Ulevi, will be in the middle there. Um, kind of surprised to see Nick Patan not getting a look, especially after he was sort of, uh, you know, people seem to like his preseason, especially playing with guys like Brock Besser and JT Miller. Uh, however, he will be on the outside looking in tonight as well. Keep in mind, the Canucks do play back-to-back -back games on Friday and Saturday, so if the Canucks do happen to lose a game here, you're going to see these get shuffled a fair bit. This is going to mainly just be for tonight. Let's talk about the defensive side. Uh, Oliver ekman Larson and Tyler Myers getting paired up. This one's interesting because we saw a lot of um, Oliver ekman Larson and Tucker Pullman playing together. Uh, as a unit, however, what I think the Canucks want to do is they're they're scared of having Hughes and Myers out there on the ice together. So what they've done is they've moved Myers up to play with OEL. 
Um, two big guys who uh, hopefully can can play solid games. It's going to be our first taste of Oliver Ekman Larson in NHL action, not with the Coyotes, uh, and hoping he can bounce back after a couple of tough years. Tonight will be his first real test going up against guys like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Your second pair, Quinn Hughes, Tucker Pullman. Uh, Pullman, very low event hockey, shut down, you know, doesn't allow a lot defensively, doesn't do a lot offensively. Uh, pairing him up with Quinn Hughes, which should allow Quinn Hughes to play a bit more of a dynamic offensive game if he wants to go up and lead a rush. Tucker Pullman is going to stay back. You're not going to be caught with him and like Tyler Myers both in deep behind the opponent's net, uh, allowing an odd man to rush the other way. Uh, so it might open the door a little bit for Quinn Hughes. However, Quinn Hughes also isn't going to have a great option to bounce off of offensively with Tucker Pullman. So we'll see how their chemistry sort of works together and if that's a pairing the Canucks go with after tonight's game. The third pairing is just uh, your... <laughs> they are two seventh defensemen, basically. You have Brad Hunt, Luke Shen, two guys who uh, don't make much happen. They play a very defensive game. Um, they're not going to do much offensively. They're the perfect depth guys. And I see why the Canucks want to do this, right? They could have done Jack Rathbone and Shen. However, they might be worried about, you know, having these high offensive players in Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl and the like coming in on a Jack Rathbone. They might be worried a bit about his defensive game. And one thing I was thinking of is the Canucks should not be struggling offensively this game. Because Edmonton's defense is not very good, right? We've seen this Cody Cece Duncan Keith pairing in preseason be absolutely abysmal. So the Canucks should get a decent amount of chances. They have three lines that should be able to at least drive some offense in the top three there. Um, so what I think they're trying to do here is if we need a defensive zone faceoff or we need just two guys to sort of shut things down a little bit, Brad Hunt, Luke Shen can do that job, and maybe they don't see a spot for Jack Rathbone because they don't see the need for that extra offensive flair in this game. Now, again, that might change going into uh, games two and three of the season uh, coming up here this weekend. We'll see what they do, um, but for now, this is the look they are going with. Personally, I'm okay with it. I don't love Chase on the top line. I wish Jack Rathbone was playing just for the fun factor. Uh, but the Canucks going with sort of the safe veteran option in Brad Hunt and Luke Shen. Anyways, folks, tonight, right after the game, 9.30 p.m., right after the final horn, I will be live with my post-game show. It'll be about half an hour. Uh, so come hang out. You can ask questions. Hang out in the chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy the game. And shout out to everyone who has joined as a member. We've got a bunch of VIPs. We've got a backstage member. We've got our GOAT member, Lucas. If you want to help me out, uh, completely optional, get some extra perks, uh, feel free to click that join button right next to the subscribe button and the like button. Hit all those, leave a comment. Are you excited for tonight's game? Are you fired up? Do you think the Canucks are going to win? Leave your score predictions down in the comments below and I will see you after the game.